There's a guy by the name of John Payton, lived a century ago. Uh, he was a missionary to the Pacific Islands, and he ended up establishing uh, a small place for himself to do proclamation of the gospel, conversion, baptism, teaching uh, in the New Hebrides Islands when nobody else was there except for the natives. He went, he set up his little hut, he brought just a very few basics from home, and every day he would go out and he would talk to people and try to tell them about Jesus, try to proclaim the gospel. Every Sunday he would have a service out in front of his hut, and those people would sit very patiently and listen to him because they were accommodating people. The only problem was, at the end of every service, he would have essentially an altar call and ask if anybody now wants to profess their faith in Jesus, and if so, we'll go down to the water and get baptized. And every week, no one stepped up. And he started to get a little discouraged over time. After he'd done this several months, uh, it came to All Saints, and he heard and preached on the very same lessons that you just heard. Uh, Jesus saying, blessed are the poor. Uh, if someone strikes you on one cheek, give them the other one. If they ask for your jacket or coat, give them your shirt as well. Don't ask for them to return things that you've given them. And again, nobody went to be baptized. On Monday morning, he has a knock on his hut. And he thinks, oh, maybe somebody's taking me up on the offer. He opens the curtain, and as he goes out, there's a person from the village, and they say, I was wondering if I could have your frying pan. <laughs> he said, well, it's what I cook my food in, the only frying pan I brought. But he remembered what he had just said. And so he gave them the frying pan. The next day, another knock in the morning. That person wants to know if they could have his lamp, which is how he does his reading and study at night. He lights a lamp and he thinks, well, what the heck, I can do my study during the day. And he gives away his lamp. The next morning, someone asks for his desk. And that afternoon, someone asks for his cooking utensils. And this goes on all week until there's barely anything left in his hut. On Saturday, when he thinks he's hit rock bottom, someone knocks and asks, could I have your bed? <laughs> and he says, I've got arthritis. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this might be the end. I might die out here sleeping on the ground. But he gives them the bed. And he goes back to rest for the evening, thinking, obviously, my ministry is over. And he says, one more service I'll do tomorrow morning. The next morning, he wakes up, he opens the curtain, and outside is the whole village. Every member of the village is standing outside his door. And they're all laughing hilariously. And he says, what's so funny? They separate, and everything of his was right behind him in a great big pile. And they said, it's so funny because we didn't want your stuff. <laughs> but for months, we've been listening to you read out of that book, and it seemed like it was too good to be true what you were telling us. And so we said, Let's put him to the test. Let's see if he actually does what he says. And so we decided, we've got a test for him. We'll ask for everything, just like in that reading you read last week, and see if he wants it back. You have passed the test. And therefore, we want to learn more about this God that you've been telling us, and... We're ready as a village to all be baptized. John Payton is a saint 
not because he was a magnificent speaker, but because he simply did what the words said. What he knew God was saying, this is how I want you to live your life. That is the way John Payton lived it. And because of that, he made his mark on some people who became followers of Jesus Christ because he showed them what it meant and he showed them that it was true. On this day of all saints, we have to remember that the Feast of All Saints was established by the church, not for the big name saints who all have their own days, right? Peter, Paul, and Mary, they get their day, right? Rather, the church in its wisdom said, all the different big name saints get their special observance. But in fact, as Paul told us tonight, each and every one of us who is baptized into the faith and tries your best to follow what Jesus calls us to do is a saint in the eyes of the church. And so we have St. Dottie, right? And St. Everybody, St. Jean, St. Leslie, everybody, each and every one of you, we remember on All Saints Sunday that it really is a day devoted to all the saints of God, all the people who faithfully try to follow God's word in their life, try to do making their mark in the world, not necessarily in some big way, but by living your life and trying to be someone who does the words, not just someone who can speak the words. Now, you might ask, how in the world do I do that? But Paul, in the reading we heard tonight, gives us the answer. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked as one of God's children. You are the ones who the same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is available to each one of you to give you the gifts that he prays for. Wisdom, strength, courage to do the things that God needs done in the world. And that's true of each and every one of us. Now on this day, we always remember people who have been instrumental in our life, who taught us what it meant to be someone who knows how to love, who knows how to serve, who knows how to put other people first. On a day like today, I'm always remembering first of all my grandmothers. Ma Cowan, Ma Randall, Ma Randall is the one who, when I was eight years old, started teaching me canasta. And you know you have to have the gift of patience to teach an eight-year-old how to play canasta, right? She taught me how important it was to keep reading the newspapers because she believed it was important you knew what was going on around you. She's someone who showed love in all of the gifts that she gave all the time. Ma Cowan, my mother's mother, uh, the thing I remember best about her was that when we went to visit her, which was almost weekly when I was a young child, uh, we would show up and the thing that I went to first was the oven. Because in the oven was always a box with a dozen Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> That was the only thing that ever went in my grandmother's oven. <laughs> but I knew that if we were showing up, there were going to be Dunkin' Donuts in the oven, and they were intended for me, right? So it's hard for me to pass a Dunkin' Donuts store still today. But I also remember that there are saints, as our song said, they didn't only live in the past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is full of God's saints, it says. And I remember that in our parish, as we remember in our prayers tonight, we will remember those who died and went and became part of the communion of the saints, those who have gone on before, who led their faithful lives here among us.
but also we'll list the names of those who were baptized this year because they too have become saints. We baptized a young baby today at the 1030 service and I said we're going to enter into the saint making process. So we'll read those lists but all the time I hope you're paying attention because the saints are all around us. When I try to figure out how to live like a saint I think it's sort of like learning how to dance. When I was in high school, I was totally, totally afraid of doing anything so bold as getting out on a dance floor. And I sat on the sides for a couple school dances, and then I realized it's not that hard if you watch somebody and you study what they do, and then you just go out and try to imitate them, and then all of a sudden it becomes your own and somebody's following you. And that's what it means to live among people who are doing their best to follow God. We find someone who we see, ah, Carol's trying to live the saintly life. And we watch her, observe her, and then as Paul says several times and gets him in trouble, imitate me. Because if we can find somebody who's doing their best, that's the kind of person we want to follow. And we'll learn not only how to dance, but we'll learn how to be a saint. In the last month, I was introduced uh, by one of our saints in the congregation to a saint that I've been studying and reading and learning more about, Brian Stevenson, who some of you may know is an African-American lawyer in the Montgomery, Alabama area who has become the leader of the Equal Justice Initiative. He is someone who, if you've watched the news, you see, built the museum and the memorial for the lynchings that happened over a hundred year period. And it's getting a lot of attention and he's using that attention as a way to focus on some of the justice issues that we still need to be working on. And I've been introduced to him by a saint of our own congregation, Saint Jim Pernini, <laughs> who he was saying, no, not me, this morning at 8 o'clock. But the truth is, Jim took the courage and the time to make a pilgrimage to Montgomery to learn about that work. And he brought it back to our men's group. And on Wednesday night, two weeks from now, on the 13th, he'll teach about Brian Stevenson and how important his work is today and why that's a saint we ought to learn how to follow. I only wish I always had enough courage to do the things that I see Brian Stevenson is doing, looking at what's wrong in the world and trying his best to make a difference. Each and every one of you are saints. God has already put a claim on your head and said, I give you gifts and the gifts are there to do my work in this world. Now just go try to get in the line dance. <laughs> There's an old 60 songs I think Jesus used right after he told that to the disciples where he said, don't do this, do this, do this, do this. It was keep the ball rolling, keep the ball rolling. Yeah, the name of the game is love. It's a trite song, right? But you know what? That's the job of the saints. Keep the ball rolling. It's in your court. 